Today I'm going to be reading chapter two from the Cozy Escape September book club pick, Death by Coffee by Alex Erickson, which kind of reminds me of that dessert from Bennigan's called Death by Chocolate. I don't even know if they have that anymore, but I used to love that thing. I'm Lisa and welcome to my Cozy Mystery AuthorTube channel where we talk about all things related to cozy mystery writing. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday or like this week, I sometimes just post new videos every day. So make sure to hit the bell below so you get notifications when new videos go live. Now it is a cozy escape book club tradition that Courtney and I read the first two chapters from whatever book that was voted on and chosen by the book club members for that month. And it serves two purposes. One, you can check out the book and make sure it's something that you're interested in and excited to read. And two, I think it just helps spark that reading effort because to read a book is a lot of work sometimes when you have a ton of other things going on. And let's be real, watching a TV show or a movie is way easier. So um, this is going to be chapter two. Now, if you are wanting to go in order, I will leave a link or the card or whatever it is to Courtney's video for chapter one and then come back here for chapter two. So I'm going to be reading the chapter and also sharing with you some of my thoughts on what I think of it so far and what I'm hoping to see in the rest of the book. So we're back at my Zen little reading area, which is basically just all of Kirsten's beautiful plants. My iPad over here on the right, a bag of sugar-free chocolate, because whose writing and reading has not been improved by chocolate. So your first question is probably which of these chocolates is my favorite? And it is for sure this one over here, the chocolate toffee and caramel, because who wouldn't want all three of those flavors together? It's a quick behind the scenes moment. In case you're wondering how I do my setup, I actually changed it. I used AirPods last week and the sound wasn't that great. So I am switching over this week to using my blue Yeti mic. But because I'm using my iPhone, I did have to buy this special lightning to USB 3 camera adapter. So down here at the bottom of the Yeti, I plugged that into the camera adapter on the left side. And then over on the right side is just leads over to a power source over here. And then obviously the adapter plugs into the iPhone. And that's all I had to do to set up today's recording. Great. Back to what we were supposed to be doing, which is reading chapter two of Death by Coffee. So we left off where Chrissy, one of the two owners of the Death by Coffee bookstore cafe, has just seen a dead body rolling out at the end of chapter one. She saw a huge class ring flashing on someone's hand. She thinks it is Brendan Lawyer. So let's jump in. Of course, I couldn't be sure it was actually Brendan Lawyer who had died. There could be any number of people in Pine Hills who wore a class ring just like that one. As far as I knew, it was a local status symbol that half of the town wore or something given to everyone who works in the building across the street. I hadn't been in town long enough to know. It was tempting to head over and ask somebody. It seemed like everyone else in town had converged on the spot. I had a feeling deaths like this weren't all that common. This wasn't New York or even Cincinnati for that matter. Pine Hills was perhaps a tier above a small town, making a sudden death all the more shocking because everyone probably knew one another by sight. News of the death would be spread across town within an hour. The police were having a hard time keeping everyone back, though I doubted there was much to see. If the guy had been shot or stabbed or something, I had a feeling there'd be more panic. People would be running around, screaming, hands waving the air, making it harder for the police to do their jobs. As it was, the crowd was simply trying to push forward to get a better view of what had happened. I could only assume Brendan Lure had suffered a stroke or maybe an aneurysm like Eleanor's husband. Natural causes. That's what I kept telling myself. The guy had died of natural causes, and everything would get back to normal in a day or two. What do you think happened to him, Vicky asked. She had trouble in her arms and was stroking him as if he was the only thing keeping her calm. He had a look on his face that said he was none too happy about the attention, but whenever Vicky held him, she could get away with just about anything. I, on the other hand, would have had gouges in my arms that would have required stitches. I think someone died. I didn't want to voice my opinion on who I thought was dead in case I was wrong. It would be just my luck to start a rumor that would turn out to be wildly inaccurate. I didn't need that sort of attention, especially being so new. We watched the scene for a little while before going back to work. There wasn't much to see out there anyway. A few of the onlookers had given up on catching sight of something exciting and had come over for some coffee and gossip. 
I had to admit that while the circumstances weren't ideal, the death for sure had increased business. I spent the next half hour filling orders and bussing tables without a breath in between. Vicky, likewise, was busy up by the books. Whenever she got a moment, she'd come down and help me out. She'd fill a few orders and then return to the books, pushing my dad's novels more often than not. And despite her rushing around, not a hair was out of place. I, however, was drenched in sweat and my hair was plastered to my forehead like it had been glued on. I wasn't jealous, really. Excuse me, ma'am. I looked up from where I was scrubbing a table to find an angel standing before me. Okay, maybe he wasn't an actual angel, but I swear to you that when I first laid eyes upon him, he was glowing. It might have been the sun or the way the lights caught his sandy brown hair, which verged on the edge of blonde that caused it, but that knowledge did little to diminish my first impression of the man. His eyes were a deep blue, and he had dimples that I could lose myself in for days. Um, yes? I glanced away before I realized that I was staring. I hurriedly brushed hair out of my eyes and tried to tidy myself up as much as I could without a shower. I sucked in my gut tucked in my shirt, and silently wished I had started working out before now. I kept priming myself, promising myself I'd get back in shape, but something always came up, like a good cupcake or a movie that I just had to watch. I wasn't fat or anything, but compared to Vicky, no man was ever going to give me a second glance. I'm Officer Dalton. Are you in charge here? I came crashing back into reality. Yeah, I said, looking down at the badge on his chest. The glow dissolved around him as soon as realization set in. This man, this angel who'd been so kind to bless me with his presence, was a police officer. Craptastic. I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind, he said almost shyly. He might be a police officer, someone who was supposed, supposed to be in charge of any situation, but he seemed downright cute with his sheepish smile and kind eyes. I couldn't see him throwing anyone down and cuffing them. Well, maybe in someone's dreams, perhaps. I felt the flush rush up my cheeks, and I glanced around the room to hide it. There were still quite a few customers left, and they were all watching us. I feared what would happen if I were to be questioned in front of them. I hadn't done anything wrong, yet I couldn't help but feel that one wrong move would destroy any hope of death by coffee surviving. I can handle this, Vicky said, coming up behind Officer Dalton. She raised her eyebrows at me and mouthed, wow, just before he glanced back at her. She smiled sweetly at him. Officer Dalton looked around the room, surprisingly unhypnotized by Vicky's good looks. Is there somewhere we can talk that would be a little more private? The thought of being alone with him was enough to make my temperature rise. I had to fan myself and clear my throat before I could even think to speak. The office, I said, gesturing toward one of the two doors behind the counter. I doubted he'd want to go back into the kitchen with the dirty dishes or in the stock room upstairs, where the only place to sit was on unpacked boxes of books and cups. We can talk there. There was a collective groan from the crowd. I swear one of the ladies sitting by the window had moved a few seats closer while I wasn't looking. They just have to get their gossip somewhere else. I led Officer Dalton to our dinky office, sort of wishing the space was bigger. Maybe the stockroom wasn't such a bad idea. At least there we could talk without knocking knees. I prayed Vicky did a good job with the customers in my absence because, quite frankly, I'd been just about running myself ragged, working with just the coffee. She was going to have to run both sections, which had to be near impossible. Officer Dalton closed the door behind us. I offered him one of the two computer chairs crammed into the room with the tiny desk and filing cabinet. The space was more of a closet than anything. In fact, I think it was a closet at one time, but it was the only place where we could put a computer without sticking it in the sink. We both sat. What is this about, officer? I asked, taking my cue from the movies. Call me, Paul, he said, clearly not going by the script. Everyone else does. Okay, Paul. I felt a blush creep farther up my neck. I felt like a girl talking for the first time to a boy she liked. I wasn't sure when I'd last felt that way. I'm Chrissy. Christina. Hancock. Chrissy Hancock. This time my face erupted into a flush that burned. Paul gave me another flash of those dimples in, before opening a notepad. I just have a few questions for you, Mrs. Hancock. You're not in any sort of trouble. I'm not married, I blurted out. I promptly wanted to die. Noted, Paul said with a smile. Just call me Chrissy. He nodded, cleared his throat, and then launched into the questions. Did you know a man by the name of Brendan Lawyer? I knew it. I choked back the explanation and nodded. Sort of, I said. He came in for coffee earlier today. Was he with anyone else? No, he came in alone. Paul flipped a page. Did he buy anything to eat while he was here? I noticed you sell donuts. He made it a question, telling me he hadn't looked too hard. Cookies, I said. Homemade. And no, he didn't buy anything other than a coffee. He asked for it to go, and then sat down to drink it. I wasn't sure why I added the last. Did he eat anything at all while he was here? I thought back. I remember seeing a brief briefcase. I suppose he could have brought food with him, but I didn't pay too much attention to what he was doing. He didn't stay long. He got a call and then rushed off after only a few minutes. Did you see where he went? 
Back to his office, I think. I tapped my chin before nodding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he went back to his office, though I didn't actually see him go in. So you don't know if he made another stop. Sorry. Paul scribbled something into his notepad before asking, do you happen to use peanuts in your cookies? The question caught me a little by surprise. Peanuts? Why, no. Is there any chance his coffee came in contact with some sort of peanut product? Not from my end, I said. If Mr. Lawyer had brought lunch with him, then I guess he could have had some peanuts then. Why? Paul wrote something else down in his notepad before looking up at me. He was all seriousness. My heart rate picked up and I had to force myself to keep from looking too nervous. My foot wanted to jiggle up and down, so I planted it firmly on the floor where it had nowhere to go. Did Morster Lawyer leave anything behind when he left your store? No, I said. I cleaned the table myself just a few moments after he had gone and I didn't see anything. Did something come up missing? Officer Dalton sat back in his chair and flipped his notepad closed. His EpiPen. I frowned. I'd heard of an EpiPen before, but wasn't sure what it was for. I asked him as much. It... It's used by people with severe allergies, he said. If they are experiencing an attack, they jab themselves with it. He used his pen to demonstrate, poking himself in the outer thigh with it. With a frown, he looked at the mark he'd made on his otherwise clean tan slacks. He clicked his pen closed and looked back at me. Mr. Lawyer's EpiPen was gone. He went into anaphylactic shock. My hands went to my mouth. He had a peanut allergy? Paul nodded. He was extremely allergic to peanuts, though from what I've gathered, he could eat most other nuts. He was alone in his office and his EpiPen was missing. Right now, we think it was an accident. He might have left the device at home and then came in contact with peanuts somehow during the day. I was hoping you could shed some light on what he might have eaten. I'm sorry, I said. I don't have peanuts here, and I didn't see whether or not he brought anything to eat with him. Paul gave me a reassuring smile. It was a long shot. Someone is talking to his wife, and I'm sure she can fill us in more. He fell silent. I couldn't believe someone I just served had died. The guy had a wife, maybe even a kid or two, and was now gone forever. It hit me just how bad of a name death by coffee really was. No one was going to want to eat here now. I take it you were new in town, Paul asked suddenly, drawing me out of my contemplations. He cleared his throat and looked at his hands instead of directly at me. I haven't seen you around before. Just got in yesterday, I said. Would have been in sooner, but my U-Haul broke down on the way. I still haven't unpacked. I paused. I just opened up the store today. Hell of a way to start out, right? Paul gave a nervous laugh before clearing his throat again. Yeah, Vicky was going to die when I told her what had happened. So much for a positive outlook. Paul sat there for a moment longer before suddenly standing. I'll get out of your hair, he said. Thanks for your cooperation. If you learn anything more, please let us know. He held out his hand. We shook. His hand was firm, but surprisingly soft. I was guessing he didn't do much hard labor, but he kept himself in stunning shape due to his job. I had to force myself to let go of his hand, lest I drool on it. This time, Paul led the way as we left the small office and returned to the store proper. He nodded once to Vicky before glancing back at me. He gave me yet another winning smile before leaving. He crossed the road and stopped to talk to an older woman in a police uniform. They spoke for a few minutes before they each got into a squad car and drove off. I stared dumbly after them. I was trying hard to remember if there was any way I could have gotten peanut extract in Brandon's coffee. I was terrified I somehow was responsible for the man's death. He'd come here just before he died. Did that mean his coffee had been laced with peanuts? What did he want, Vicky asked, coming to stand next to me. Her hair was still perfect, and she hadn't broken a sweat the entire time I was gone. All eight tables were sparkling clean, and the customers seemed happy. They watched me with eager, curious eyes. I led Vicky behind a stack of to-go cups where no one could see us. The guy who died here for co- the guy who died came here for coffee before. He, well, you know, he died. I spoke in a near whisper. He had an allergic reaction and went into some sort of shock. There was no way I was going to try to pronounce the word Paul had used. I'd end up sounding dumber than I really was. My tongue did strange things on big words, even if I knew how to pronounce them. A reaction to something in the coffee, Vicky asked, a little too loud for my liking. I glanced around the cups to some of the customers' looks at their coffee cups as if they might contain poison. At least four of them got up and left. I hope not, I said. He was allergic to peanuts. We don't have any of those here. Oh, Vicky said, was quiet for a moment. What about the hazelnut coffee? I sucked in a breath. Could I have accidentally given him the wrong kind of coffee? I was almost positive I'd served regular black coffee, but I suppose I could have made a mistake. I don't know if that would affect his allergy, I said. I'd have to look it up sometime. Besides, he wanted regular coffee, none of the flavored stuff. Vicky slowly nodded her head and then burst into a grin. She nudged me with her elbows. He's cute though, isn't he? Who, the dead guy? No, silly, the police officer. Visions of dimples and blue eyes swam in my head. I very nearly swooned. I suppose, I said, clearing my throat. Paul isn't bad. Paul, eh? First name basis already? She waggled her eyebrows at me. Shut up. He's okay. 
Right, she said with a laugh. The last time I saw you look like that was when my dad introduced you to Jason Momoa at the movie premiere. I swear you floated all the way home that night and wrote Chrissy and Jason forever in your diary about a thousand times. I did not. I'd settled on writing his name over and over, but I wasn't about to tell her that. You should go for it, Vicky said. He wasn't wearing a ring. That doesn't mean anything, she winked. Of course it doesn't. He's investigating a murder, I said, putting as much indignation into my voice as I could. I knew Officer Dalton had said he thought it was an accident, but murder sounded much more dramatic. I shouldn't be thinking about whether or not the man is available. Vicky only smiled before walking off to take care of an elderly man holding a few paperback books upstairs. I looked across the street at the now empty building. The lights were out telling me that anyone who worked inside had left with the crowd. Even death by coffee was emptying of guests now that the excitement had died down or because they thought the coffee might kill them. Either way, the place was definitely dying down. I thought of Brendan Lawyer and how he'd been rude and abrupt to me while he'd been here, but even then, he hadn't deserved to die. Could I have been responsible? I looked away, wondering if I should do something. A man died after coming into my place. I couldn't sit back and let that go. I might have to talk to Officer Dalton again, sometime to make sure my coffee had nothing to do with Mr. Lawyer's death. In a grim sort of way, I actually sort of looked forward to that conversation. With a sigh that might have been just a little dreamy, I went back to the counter to double check my labels. If something I'd served had peanut extract in it, I planned on finding out. I never ever wanted something like this to happen again. So that is chapter two. So I'm excited. I really, this was my choice for the Cozy Escape Book Club for the month because I really wanted to read about two book protagonists solving a crime. However, after reading a little bit more of the book, it's become apparently obvious that this book is all in Chrissy's point of view and it's all her and her friend Vicky is kind of just like her sidekick, um, which is fine. But I guess when I heard about two people opening up Death by Coffee Bookstore Cafe, I thought it would be both of them kind of going at it as equal protagonists. So um, so yeah. And then the cat's name is Trouble. I don't know if you got that from there. So it's, uh, it's hard to tell when you're reading. So I'm excited to read the rest of it. Um, I typically don't read books by men like no matter what the genre is um not on purpose just like it just kind of happens that way um so this will be interesting i think he totally nailed the female pov and that is pretty awesome just all by itself so excited to see what goes on in pine valley with the rest of this book now if you want to join us for the cozy escape book club discussion that is the last wednesday of the month we always have it the last wednesday at 7 p.m central standard time but if you can't wait until then because obviously it's fun just to hang out with Courtney and I. We will be doing a Cozy Escape chit chat on Friday the 13th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that will be on Courtney's channel um, or you can RSVP. I will leave links to both of those below. I like the RSVPs because I need reminders in my calendar. Otherwise, I will never remember to go or do anything. So I have RSVPs down below and we can't wait to see you for the chit chat or for book club discussion. And most importantly, Importantly, can't emphasize this enough, you can still show up to the Cozy Escape Book Club without reading the book. So if you don't have time to read this book, whatever happens between now and the last Wednesday of the month, we will recap the book for you in the beginning of the call. It takes like five minutes and then you can hang out with us for the book club discussion and know everything that's going on. All right, I can't wait to see you guys and I hope everyone's having a fabulous day and we will talk to you later. Bye.